right, if I could have your attention, please, we're going to get started. I'm going to, I'm going to introduce Coach Bowden in a second, but there's going to be a night full of stories. I don't know how many stories are going to be about Terry, so I wanted to tell a quick Terry story that I think only a couple other people know in this room. Um, one that I know that knows this story is Ralph Palmasano, who's on our board of trustees, because he was at dinner that night. But, you know, there's many things that you get when you hire a Bowden as your head football coach. And uh, w so many wonderful things have happened from, from the moment when he got hired. Um, you know, we were on the Sports Center. There was a huge article in the USA Today. Uh, he was on countless radio shows. People were sending me notes. Wow, I can't believe that we hired a Bowden as a football coach. But what people don't know is that is how the contract got signed that night. So we went to dinner. Mr. Palmasano, our former president, a couple of other trustees, and, and uh, myself, and, and uh, Terry Bowden. We went to a very nice restaurant in Cleveland. And at the end of the evening, uh, we sent Coach Bowden on a, in a taxi back to the hotel. And uh, I just told him, I'll be in touch. And then uh, we sat around as a group and uh, kind of talked about where we were going. And then in the end, uh, the president and I went over and stood in the corner. And he said, what do you think? And I said, uh, I said, well, I think uh, Coach Bowden's going to be our football coach. I said, but he's going to be a lot of work for you and me. He's going to be kind of high maintenance, I think. <laughs> and so our president said, well, what does that mean? I said, well, I, I said, I'll get back to you on that. So it's about 1030 at night, and I called him on his cell phone. And I had the MOU in my uh, briefcase. And I said, Coach, I want to come see you at the hotel. And he said, well, um, okay. Now, he, this, he'd been gone about an hour and a half. And he's like, okay. I said, I'll call you when we get there to the lobby. So I get to the lobby. I call him. He's like, well, you want, me to, you want me to come down? I said, well, no, no, we'll come up. What room are you in? He goes, well, I'm in my pajamas. And I said, well, that's no big deal. So we walk right up to his room, knock on the door. And I thought he was kidding. He was really in his pajamas. He had long flannel pajamas on with a t-shirt and he was really sitting on his bed with his computer in his pajamas and we signed the deal right then and it's been a great ride ever since. Coach Terry Bowden, come on up here. I thought we would do is introduce the family, uh, a little bit of everybody and talk a little bit about, we've been very fortunate uh, and football has been our life. Together as a family, uh, and of course Jeff has worked with me with four different jobs, Jeff's been with me and was my, with my, brother, my dad for 12 years in, in offensive uh, coordinator capacity and special teams capacity, but we've been very fortunate in the 90s. Uh, my dad and I were the first father and son ever to become head coaches in the Division I in college football history. At the same time, we were the only family ever. Tommy and my dad were the only uh, coach, uh, family members ever to coach against each other in Division I history. And in the 90s, we were very fortunate that all three of us were able to go undefeated and name National Coach of the Year in the Division I level at Auburn in 1993. I was very fortunate to be a part of an undefeated season. In 1998, Tommy took Tulane to a 12-0 season and uh, was National Coach of the Year. And the next year, 1999, Dad was able to, and Je Jeff and Dad together at Florida State were able to go undefeated uh, and win the National Championship that year at, uh, at um, Florida State. And together we have about 613 wins together as a family, which is about 150 more than any other family ever has won in this Division I football that we're in. And so it's kind of our business. At this time, I'm introducing my brother Jeff. And Jeff, I wanted Jeff to talk to you for about five minutes. And, and Jeff has been with me at Sa Salem College. He's my offensive coordinator, 22 years old, lived in my basement. Been with me at Sanford University. Been with me at North Alabama. And has been with me now here and also served as my dad's assistant coach for 12 years, six years as his offensive coordinator. And a lot of people don't realize this, but I think that I'm proudest of is when Jeff took over as the offensive coordinator at Florida State University. My dad was six games behind Joe Paterno as the winningest coach in the history of Division One football. And when Jeff retired, he was eight games ahead as the winningest coach in Division One football. And I can think of no other honor to do for your father than that. Jeff. You know, I don't owe anybody a reason why I like to coach with my brother. I don't owe anybody a reason why I like to coach with my family. It's my life, okay? But I know one thing, I'm coaching with a winner. And that's what this is all about. I'm coaching with somebody that has a vision and that's what I, that's what I wanna follow. 
I, I can see what he sees down the road for Akron. This is a great staff. I've been on. I, I was a, with Coach Amato at Florida State, and I was with some really good coaches. This is as good as you're going to get, I, I believe. And that's just my opinion, but I'll leave it with that. Thank you, guys. I enjoyed it, and have a good evening. I don't know if you know much about the ACC up here. I know this is Mac and this is Big Ten, but my father and I, we played against each other. We played nine times as a father-son uh, combination. I had to beat him. He was in my conference, uh, in my side of the division, so I had to beat him to go to the championship game, and he had to beat me. We played nine times. He won five. I won four. He won the first four in a row. I won the last four out of five. And I had to recruit against him to try to get players. And Just one little quick recruiting story against my father. Uh, we recruited uh, a guy several years ago, a guy named C.J. Spiller. He's a running back for Buffalo Bills. He's a great tailback, but uh, he was in Lake Butler, Florida, about uh, 40 miles north of Gainesville. His childhood favorite team was Florida State growing up, and uh, prospects can visit four or five schools. He had it down to four schools. <laughs> C.J. was going to visit Southern Cal, where Pete Carroll was. He was going to visit University of Florida, where Urban Meyer was. He was going to visit Florida State. He always liked them. He was going to visit Clemson. So I remember I went in to see uh, CJ, and his mother met me at the door, and sure enough, you open the door, and there's, I mean, his family running everywhere. Little kids running around, his grandmother, the grandfather, family, the aunts, the uncles, the pastor, the mentors, everybody's there. And when you walk in, the first thing you want to do is you want to grab one of them little kids because you want to show the mother that you're going to treat her son like you would like one of the little kids. So you grab a kid after you hug the mother. The first thing, you hug the mother and love up on her just a little bit. So I grabbed her and hugged up on her. Then I went and grabbed one of the little kids and started bouncing my knee and playing with the kid and playing games with him. The mother sees that and she likes that. So after about an hour, I grabbed Mrs. Spiller. I said, Mrs. Spiller, can you come here for just a minute? I want to talk to you. I said, uh, listen, I just want your son to be happy. I don't care where he goes to school. He's just not a number to me. Okay, where he goes, I just want him to be happy. But I do want you to know this. My father's coming in next week. My father had six children. And I just want you to know this, that my father used to beat us as children. <laughs> when we were I said, I don't care where he goes, I just want him to be happy. That's all I know. I don't care if he comes to me or not. Small town, Lake Butler, Florida, he's coming in next. He goes in next, and he's played the game a lot longer than I have. He knows how to hug the mom up and love on her a little bit, and grabs a grandmother, and he was usually the age of the grandmother, so he worked real good with grandmothers. <laughs> but, but he grabbed the kid. You know, he, he went after the kids just like everybody, he, and he bounced them on her knee, and he played with them, did the same games with the children. And he grabbed CJ's mother off the side. He said, Mrs. Spiller, I just want you to know one thing. I just want your son to be happy. I don't care where he goes to school. He's not a number to me, but I know Tommy, my son Tommy, was in here last week, and he said, oh, you know, Mrs. Spiller, I had six children, and I just want you to know, of all my children, Tommy lied the most, <laughs> and we got him. We, we lied right, right through the whole recruiting process. Tommy, you paid C.J. Spiller. <laughs> Get that straight right now. <laughs> you know, being here tonight, all you are is Florida State 40 years ago. We were in the same boat at Florida State 40 years ago. I was coaching up at West Virginia. Of course, I was from Alabama and Georgia and Florida, and Anna and I decided we want to go home. The job came open down there. They were 0-11, 1-10. <laughs> three and eight, fired the coach, tried to hire me out of West Virginia. Well, we just got back from, from two bowls. We were winning some doggone ball games. Why, why do I want to go down there? You know, they can't beat anybody, you know. But Ann and I, have, we, we decided, let's go home. That's where we're from. That's where all of our old friends are. Let's go home. And so we decide to go back to Florida State at the last moment. And uh, at that time, Florida State had a stadium that seated 41,000. Now that's close to what you got here, 41,000. They were averaging 17,000 a game. Now that'll get you fired. Because football is going to have to pay all the bills down there, you know. You're going to have to support all those other sports that don't make nothing. You know what? So you've got to get people coming to the games and buying those tickets. Well, I, 
being the head coach, they gave me six, no, ten complimentary tickets every game. Now that was for the family, you know. And so I could do, I could do what I wanted to. You can't sell them because they're, they're complimentary. It's against the law. Well, I gave two to my wife, Ann, because I couldn't go with her. She, you know, somebody go with her. And uh, Jeffrey and Ginger were still there at the time, and I gave them two where they could take a friend. Then I gave one of my neighbors two, and I had two left over. Nobody warned them. <laughs> I tried to give them to the janitor. Here, here's your two tickets to the game. I ain't going. <laughs> that's the way it was, man. I said, I got to get these, I, I got to get people in those stands. I got to get somebody to take these tickets. So the day before the ball game, I drive down to Tallahassee Mall. That's where everybody comes the day of a game. You know how they come early and shop. And uh, my barber, barber shop was in there. I had to get a haircut. So I, I pulled up right to the front of the mall. I got those two tickets. I put them on the windshield of my car right outside, you know. Then I got up and went and got a haircut. And I said, somebody else steal them daddy them tickets. I'll have those two people there anyway, you know. <laughs> I go in there and get a haircut, and I come out in about an hour. There's six tickets on my windshield. <laughs> Now that's how bad it was. That's how bad it was. But as I as I sit up here as I sit up here today and uh, see what's going on, I really I can compare it with the Florida State, you know, because we wasn't winning any games either. Y'all y'all have got a great opportunity here. I hope you recognize that. You know what? I know this too as you take on programs. Number one, you've got to have an administration that wants it. You've got to have an administration that wants it. And if they don't, I don't, you, you ain't going to make it. You know what? But I think you have that. I think you have all of that in place, you know. And, uh, and then, of course, then you've got to, you've got to get the right coach. How come Alabama turned it around all of a sudden? Nick Saban. Nick Saban made the difference, you know. And you can go other schools the same way, you know. So y'all have got in place the great thing to start with. I love the direction you're heading. You know what? Winning, what, five ball games last year? Beat Michigan? It would have been the biggest upset of all time. That close. You're that close, you know what? Now, there's only one answer to winning college football or any other sport, too, any, any competitive sport. You simply have to get the best players. Then all you've got to have is you've got to have good coaches. Well, everybody's got good coaches. Everybody's got good coaches. And what you can't let happen is don't let the coaches mess it up. Coaches can mess it up. You know, but I think you've got a staff here. I know Chuck Amata. I worked with him so long. One of the best football coaches I've ever been around. He'll never know how much I appreciate him. But, but the coaching staff that y'all have got, the ones I've met, and the one I've read about, and the ones I know, you have got the staff, you've got the stadium, and, it, and it, it'll keep growing. You know, and you've got the community. Tallahassee, Florida, we got... We got the Dadgum Ocean 25 miles away. <laughs> got the Georgia Line 20 miles that way. We, you know, y'all got, y'all got millions of people here. Millions. All we got down there is Indians. <laughs> <laughs> but those Indians love us. I guarantee those Seminoles love Florida State. And we love those Seminoles, you know. And, uh, but again, as I, as I look at the situation, Terry, it just reminds me of, when I went to Florida State about 40 years ago, see? And uh, with God's help, you can do it. I think everybody realizes that, don't they? Everybody here, you realize that, don't you? Yeah. And it's going to be in your hands now. Because along with having excellent coaches and along with having excellent facilities, which you've got. Your facilities here compared to what I went to Florida State with, I mean, man, we had nothing. How'd you like to take over the job in Florida State in 76? 
They had lost so many games down there, they were, they were, they were half a million dollars in debt, and considering dropping football. Nobody would come to Tallahassee to play. Tallahassee couldn't, we couldn't fill the stadium. We couldn't pay, we couldn't pay them to come, you know. So Florida State had to go to other schools and play, and they had to pay us. So my, I go down there and I look, I look at my future schedules. We got Nebraska, four games, four games away, no return. We got LSU, five games away, no return. We got, uh, we got Ohio State, two games away, no return. We got two games with Michigan away, no return. We got a game with Notre Dame, no return. We got three with Arizona State, no return. They don't come to Tallahassee, you know. We had to go there. My first year there, we played in five homecomings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, hey, none of, none of them were ours. It was all theirs, you know. But that's the way it went, and uh, uh, I know this. Uh, after I got there the first year and I started looking at my, my schedule down the year and I looked to about, about five years away, we had uh, Nebraska, Pitt, this one they had Marino, uh, Ohio State, uh, Notre Dame, LSU, back to back away. I said to myself, Bobby, you got to be gone by that time. You got to be gone. You know, in no way you can survive that. You know what? But to make a long story short, out of those 17 games, we won, we won 13 of them and only lost four. And it really put Florida State on the map. And see, now you're taking on Penn State and you're taking on Pitt, and it looks unsurmountable, but you you can do it. You know what? And if you just keep the spirit that that I see tonight. And keep the confidence that you can be the best. You can do it, you know. And so, thank you for having us up here. We enjoyed our golf today with you guys. We all wonderful people, you know. And uh, Ann and I plan to be back up for a couple of games this year. You don't tell me about that airplane. <laughs> <laughs> And, hey, Ann Bowden would <laughs> Ann Bowden would be here every week if she could. I guarantee you. You know what? But she and I will be back a couple of games this year. And so, Terry, good luck to you. And uh, Chuck, I'm just glad you're coaching the other side. I told Terry at the spring game this year it was what three and three or three to nothing. I told Terry. I said, Terry, that's the best thing that can happen to you. I said, if that score is 52 to 50, you ain't got a ball club. <laughs> you know what? Because you win defensively. You win defensively. You have to be able to stop people. Anyway, good to see all of you. Thank you, Dad. Appreciate that. And appreciate all of y'all. Again, uh, um, what a great opportunity we have here. I came here believing, and we talked about it, where we could go and what we could do. I, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, know. I remember when I went to Auburn, and, uh, and the previous coach had won five games two years in a row, and all I wanted to do was win six. I wanted to find a way to win six. And, I, and then that's just all I would do. That's if I could just find a way to win six. Uh, and we just worked so hard uh, trying to beat the teams that we had a chance to beat that we, were, we won six right off, the, right off the bat. And we kept winning. And we kept winning. But my goal was just to win six, but to win each game one at a time, to take them one at a time. And, uh, uh, and so I, I, I encourage you to, to get excited and get people excited. I can't put a timeline on this thing now. I wish I could. I mean, I, we, have a, we have an exciting season. We got, I got it down to three. It's four, four, and four. Four games. Four non-conference games that we've got to play. Howard University at home. Penn State away. Marshall at home. And Pitt away. Penn State, eight and four last year. Would have been to a bowl. They'll be favored. Marshall, ten and four last year. Quarterback back. They'll be favored. Pitt, seven and six. Won their bowl against Bowling Green, our conference champion. They'll be favored. But we got to find a way. We just got to find a way. Then we got the middle part of our season, which I think is the middle part. I just I, I call it the four the four conference games, and I think it, it, I think it's much better than we've had, Tom. You know, we, it, it's better. It's shaping up better. We got we've got uh, um, Eastern Michigan. We have Eastern Michigan that had to get a new coach and didn't win a game or won last year, none. And then Miami that won no games and got a new coach. So whatever they're going through, it's we've been through it, but they're they're going through that. And then we've got Ohio University lost their quarterback. Ball State, great program, 
but they lost their quarterback to the NFL. So if you say, well, that doesn't mean they're going to be bad, but at least they've got things they have to work on that everybody has to work. So that's your middle schedule. Uh, but you see up there some opportunity that uh, uh, be ready to go. Uh, but then there's our final four, and I think the season will not be determined until we get to that final four. Because no matter what you say, your, your goal may be to win every game, and it may be to win the division or win the conference. and, and go. I think our boys, if you ask them, let's, we want to have winning season go to bowl. We want to have, that's the next step, isn't it? The winning season go to bowl. That's the, that to every one of our players, that's what they want. And so the final four are Tuesday night every night, uh, national TV every week, and uh, Buffalo and uh, UMass to start with, and then Bowling Green, and finally Kent State. Well, I don't know that we'll be favored in more games than we'll be underdogs in, but you can see the possibilities. You can see the possibilities, and we players we talk about the other players every day, every day. Those possibilities. I don't think we'll know the answer to our season in the, in September, probably not in October. But as football is meant to be played for. 11, 12 games, we'll know something around the turn of November. And we are excited about that, extremely excited about that. So thank you so much for all that you do for this program. And continue to have a vision. Continue to have a vision.